uh, before driving the train, we'll take a look at it here. One thing you can do to call up the statistics of a train, go to the free cam mode by pressing the 4 key, and you control right click the locomotive, the lead locomotive anyway, view the details and it gives you your locomotive weight, your trailing weight, total train weight, train length, priority and so on, and this train pretty much meets the standards of most American freight trains since the 1950s. So it weighs roughly about 4,000 tons. This one with the locomotives is 4,714. Without the locomotives, it's 3,934. It's 5,433 feet long, which makes it about a mile long. And I've tried to use reasonably authentic 1960s, sometimes 1950s or 70s freight cars. A few of these are actually from the 40s and earlier. The thing was, is just like in every other era in the 60s, there was a mix of old and new that you would find in a freight train. And you see a lot of railroads that are now fallen flags or contractors. Pacific Fruit Express was actually a service run by several railroads. So I have some of their equipment here, but they have not actually run in many years. These wooden reefers would have been rare in the 60s, but what was not so rare, surprisingly enough, were ice bunker reefers. I couldn't decide whether to include these. I decided I would stretch credulity a little bit and include them because I like them. This is one of the later reefers, but still vintage. One of the ways you can tell is that it doesn't have the plug door on it. These were called billboard reefers, reefers that would advertise a product. And for a time they were illegal because reefers were used for a range of products and sometimes you would have to ship in a reefer that was advertising your competition. So for a time they were illegal. Nowadays you do sometimes see freight cars that have brand names on them instead of railroad names. One of the most obvious would be ADM corn syrup. Often leasing companies will offer cars like that to you so that you don't have to buy them. And you see the old three dome tankers these are roughly from, I would say World War II, but they were more common after the war. In the war, it was more common just to have a single dome. So that, that would be older. These types of tank cars are not used anymore either. These were more often used for one or another form of chemicals other than petrochemicals. And there were a lot of piggyback services in the 60s. That was sort of the state of the art in intermodal at the time. So I've included some of those, although I think these piggyback flats are inauthentic for the period because trailer train were not using the TT or TTX reporting marks in large print yet. And a lot of them were actually painted in Tuscan red instead of yellow. These reefers are relatively modern. I don't think they necessarily represent what you would have had in the 60s or even the 70s. There were similar reefers in service in the 70s. And so on and so on and so on. And because this is supposed to be an old 60s freight train, or maybe 70s, it has a caboose. But actually, I added a pusher on the back, too, because if you're going to run a heavy freight train over a mountain, that's a nice way to uh, 
ensure that your train doesn't break apart and ensure that you can actually make the grade. You mostly put your locomotives on the point, but putting pushers on the rear is not non-standard at all in mountain railroading. These models, to reiterate, are not mine. These are made by SoCal Trains. I did have to kit bash them somewhat for Oran Trains 2009 because they're not really designed for it. This cab is actually from Oran Trains 2009. It's not the one they included. The sound file is theirs, and I really like it, actually. And this cab, actually, even though it's one of Oran's older ones, it does give you a pretty realistic feel of a locomotive cab, having worked in locomotives before. I can say that it looks pretty convincing, actually. All right. I guess it's time to do the test run.